Dr. D. Walker's training tonight. In Jesus' name, I appreciate you are able to come, even at a short notice that we are going to gather here. The Lord will always bless your obedience and your faithfulness in Jesus' name. Happy Amen now. Excited Amen. Enthusiastic Amen. Somebody is so enthusiastic is, you know, waving, you know, all the hand. God bless everyone. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this night. Thank you for the training you are giving us. Thank you for the understanding we have in your word. We are asking, O oh Lord, that tonight you open our eyes of understanding. You make us to understand what you intend for our lives in Jesus' name. How to preach, how to teach, how to bring conviction on sinners, how to walk in the Spirit of God so that your word will penetrate every heart with touch in Jesus' name. Be with us tonight and load us with your blessing that we will go forth and bring blessings upon other people. In Jesus' name we pray. We're looking at Matthew chapter 25. I will read him from verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as the shepherd divided his sheep. His sheep, sheep belonging to him, from the goats. Not his goats, those goats do not belong to him. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, The sheep, come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. What have we done? Why are we on the right hand side? For I was unhungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. And then we go to verse 40. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren ye have done it unto me and then it goes on i want you to look at second timothy chapter 2 second timothy chapter 2 i'm reading from verse 7 consider what i say and the lord give thee understanding in all things the Lord give you understanding in all things. Many people, as they reach this passage, they go off the tangent. They said, all I need to do is that I should feed the hungry. I should give drink to the thirsty. I should take in the stranger. And those who are naked, I should close them. Those who are sick, I visit them. Those in prison, I visit them too. Help them, encourage them. But Jesus was not talking about going everywhere. And everywhere you see somebody hungry, feed them. Anywhere you see people who are thirsty, give them drink. Come back to Matthew chapter 
25, verse 40. The king said, shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, and it tells us in other parts of the Gospels, who is brethren and were. The people that hear the word of God, and they got the grace of God in their hearts, in their lives, and they do, and they obey that word of God. Those are his brethren. They are my brothers, my sisters, and my mother. They're doing the will of God. And he's saying that you've got the grace of God in you. And now you look at his brethren. And those his brethren, they're thirsty, they're hungry, they're strangers in the community, they're naked, they're sick, or they're in prison, help them. It's not talking about any of his disciples like Peter, John, or James, or Mary, or Martha, going to Herod and giving Herod food and giving Herod drink. I'm referring to the Herod of chapter 2 of Matthew. Herod said to those wise men, go and see where the child is and bring back word unto me that I too may worship him. But they actually wanted to kill baby Jesus. And then the Lord warned those wise men and said, don't go back there. What if they said, uh -uh, we're going to go back there because we're going to give them food, we're going to give them drink. No, it's not talking about going to Herodias. Herodias that had that, you understand, hatred for John the Baptist and for the truth. Because John had said, it is not right for Herod to take Philip's wife. And it is not for any of the disciples of Christ, like Matthew, like Thomas, to say, okay, with the word of God, you saw them naked, you saw them uh, sick, you saw them this and that, and you gave them clothes and gave them food. And for the disciples of Christ to say, we're going to Herodias. You understand? When Lazarus was uh, raised from the dead, the Jews in particular, they threatened and they said, we're even going to kill Lazarus because uh, Christ has risen from the dead and by reason of him, many are gone to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And then for any of the disciples now to say, all those Jews that made up their mind, they're going to kill uh, Lazarus, we we'll see them hungry. And we see them thirsty, and we're going to give them food, we're going to give them drink. No, that's not what Jesus is talking about. Already, they wanted to kill Lazarus because through him, many people came to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not sending you to them, go and feed them, and go and give them drink. There's a time that more than 40 people bounded themselves with an oath and they said we will not sleep until we kill paul the apostle now the lord is not saying you saw those forty people they will not eat they will not drink and they will not sleep until they kill paul the apostle why don't you go and give them food? It's not talking about that. It's talking about his brethren. It's talking about the people that know the lord not pilate not herod not even Saul of Tarsus when before he became a believer, not Herodias and not the 40. He's talking about genuinely born again people. You know them, you love them, and they're in a particular predicament, so go and help them. But let's understand even that, even giving the food, even giving the drink, and giving things to people. That does not save us. There must be salvation first. Look at John chapter 3. John chapter 3. And I'm reading here from verse, reading from verse 3. John chapter 3, verse 3. It says in verse 3, 
Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto, unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Being on the right hand side of Jesus as one of his sheep, it's not like, you know, because you feed the hungry, you clothe the naked. First of all, you are born again. Because except a man be born again, he cannot, he cannot, he will not see the kingdom of God. Look at chapter 3, verse 5 of John. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water, of the word of God, the word of God comes to him convicts him and converts him and cleanses him and turns his life around except a man be born of water and of the spirit he cannot enter into the kingdom of god doing good is not a substitute for being born again and giving money to the beggars, and giving food to the hungry, and giving clothes to the naked is not a substitute for being born again. Ye must be born again. So, as we touch the lives of people, as we help people in the house fellowship, as we help people everywhere, we must still emphasize to them the necessity of being born again. Hebrews chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 1. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them sleep. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape? If we neglect so great salvation, how shall we escape? If we neglect so great salvation, I'm feeding the hungry, I'm giving water to the thirsty, I'm clothing the naked, I'm visiting hospitals and the sick, I'm visiting the prison, how shall we escape? If we neglect so great salvation, which had the force began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. Titus chapter 3. In Titus chapter 3, I read from verse 5. Titus chapter 3, verse 5. Not by works of righteousness which we have done. But according to his mercy, he saved us. The giving money to the beggars did not save us. And the giving clothes to the naked did not save us. And water and drink to the uh, thirsty did not save us. And food for the hungry did not save us. And all the help we can give to the hopeless and the helpless did not save us. Look at that again, Titus chapter 3, verse 5. Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which is shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. We have to know Jesus Christ personally as our Savior. And it is that experiential knowledge of the instantaneous conversion that makes us enter into the kingdom of God. Verse 7, being justified by His grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. Let's come back to Matthew chapter 25 and i'm reading from verse 31 matthew chapter 25 verse 31 when the son of man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate 
They aim one from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And then he shall say, in verse 33, unto it shall say, it shall set the sheep at his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them, on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, and inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the earth. In verse 41, Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Verse 46, And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, the goats, but the righteous into what? Life eternal. Tonight we're looking at the message, the sinner's doom, and the, and the saint's destiny. The sinner's doom and the saint's destiny. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the picture of unrepentant, sinful souls. The picture of unrepentant, sinful souls. Point number two, the punishment of unrelenting stubborn sinners the punishment of unrelenting stubborn sinners point number three the promise for unretiring untiring submissive saints these are saints they're submissive and they submit to the will of God without getting tired, untiring, and without ever retiring, unretiring. And it's a great promise of paradise for them. The promise for unretiring, untiring, submissive saints. I want you to see number one. And look at how God looks at a sinful soul. He calls them, look at that, verse 32 again. In verse 32, And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as the shepherd divides the sheep, from the goats. What's the picture it gives us there? It gives us the picture of the goats. That the sinner is like a stubborn goat. It tells us in um, Ezekiel chapter 34. Ezekiel chapter 34. And we're reading from verse 17, Ezekiel 34, verse 17. And as for you, O my flock, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will judge between cattle and cattle, between the rams and the goats and the he goats. It's talking about people there. It's talking about the children of Israel there. And it refers to those who are disobedient to those who are not following his word and his will, and he refers to them as goats. And he says he will judge them. Look at Zechariah chapter 10. Zechariah chapter 10. We're reading from verse 3. Zechariah chapter 10, verse 3. Mine anger was kindled against the shepherds, and I punished the goats. And I punished the goats. So the first picture is the picture of goats. Number two. The second picture of the sinner is dog. 
seeing us are also referred to as dogs. Look at Proverbs. We're reading from verse 26. Proverbs chapter 26. And we're reading from verse 11. In verse 11, as a dog returned to his vomit, so a fool returned to his folly. As a dog returned to his vomit, so a sinner might go to church, a sinner might do whatever religious thing he wants to do or she wants to do, but the vomit that she had already made resolution. I will not do this again. I will not do this again. Especially at the eve of the, of the first day of the year. I will not. I will not. If I do that again, cut off my leg. But he returns to the vomit. It's a dog. A sinner is like a dog. We're looking at Second Peter. And I'm reading from chapter 2. Second Peter chapter 2. The picture of sinful souls. In Second Peter chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 20. For if after they have escaped from the, the pollutions of the world, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. Look at verse 21. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have no need to turn again, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. Look at the picture now. For it is happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is returned to his own vomit again. The dog is returned to his own vomit again. Number three, number one, the sinners are like goats. Two, the sinners are like dogs. Three, the sinners are like swine. Swine. Look at that verse 22 before we leave them. The dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the soul, the pig, the swine that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. That's, that's what sinners are. They hear the word of God, and it appears they look sober, they look serious, and they look uh, as if they are not going back to those things again. But before you know, before long, they're already wallowing in the dirt again. Look at Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, we're reading from verse 6. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs, they call sinners dogs, neither cast ye your pills before swine, they call sinners swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you and tear you and hurt you and harm you. You see, when a sinner is in his real nature, a goat, a dog, a swine, and then you try to give them the precious peel of the gospel, except the Holy Ghost will touch their heart, Instead of appreciating what, they, what you are doing, they turn around to tear you to pieces, to rend you. Number four, sinners are referred to as serpents. Look at Psalm 58. In Psalm 58, here is the picture of the sinner, the sinful soul. In Psalm 58, we're reading from verse 3. Psalm 58, reading from verse 3. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. It's talking about sinners, talking about the wicked. They are poisoned inside them. 
in their heart, in their mind, in their thoughts, and they are the poison of a serpent. They're like the deaf adder. That's another kind of snake, serpent, and they are deaf. And it says that stoppeth her ears, which will not hearken to the voice of charmers, charming never so wisely. Look at Psalm 140. I'm reading from verse 1. Psalm 140. We're reading from verse 1. Deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man. Preserve me from the violent man, which imagine mischiefs in their heart. Continually at they gather together for war. Verse 3, they have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. They have sharpened their tongue like a serpent. Adder's poison is under their leaves. The sinful souls in their nature, in their habits, in their character, they're like goats, they're like dogs, they're like swine, they're like serpents they're like scorpions look at ezekiel ezekiel chapter 2 in ezekiel chapter 2 reading here from verse 6 ezekiel chapter 2 reading from verse 6 it tells us in verse 6 it says and thou son of man be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words, though they be briars and thorns, though the briars and thorns be with thee, though thou dwell, thou dost dwell among the scorpions. It's referring to religious Israel, unsaved, sinful, deadly in their habits, and it says, You are dwelling among the scorpions. Be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. And then also, sinners are referred to as wolves. In Matthew chapter 7, Matthew chapter 7, we're reading from verse 15. Matthew Chapter 7, reading from verse 15. Beware of false prophets. Don't befriend them. Beware of false prophets. Don't associate with them. Beware of false prophets. Don't be acquainted with them. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly. They are ravening wolves. Sinners are referred to as wolves. Look at verse 20. Wherefore, by their fruits ye shall know them. It tells us in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20. And we're reading from verse 29. It says in verse 29, for I know this. That after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Sinners are referred to as wolves. And also, they're referred to as foxes. Foxes. Look at Ezekiel. In Ezekiel chapter 13, Ezekiel chapter 13 reading from verse 4 here we have the description the identity and the nature and the lifestyle of sinful souls ezekiel chapter 13 reading from verse 4 o israel thy prophets are like foxes in the deserts ye have, ye have not gone up into the gaps, neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle in the day of the Lord. You have seen vanity and lying divination. 
saying, the Lord says, and the Lord has not sent them. And they have made others to hope that they would confirm their word. They speak so confidently as if they had the power to confirm their words. And the Bible tells us that just wolves. Look at verse 22 as it talks about what they do. Because with lies, you have made the heart of the righteous sad, whom I have not made sad, and strengthened the hands of the wicked, that he should not return from his wicked way by promising him life. That's the identity, that's the work, that's the nature, that's the project, that's the pursuit of those foxes. They claim to be speaking for God, but no, they're speaking for themselves and for the great deceiver. We're looking at uh, Second Peter now, chapter 2. Number 8, number 1, sinners are like goats. 2, sinners are like dogs. 3, sinners are like swine. 4, sinners are like serpents. 5, sinners are like scorpions. 6, sinners are like wolves. Seven sinners are like foxes. Eight sinners are like beasts. In Second Peter chapter 2, reading from verse 12, Second Peter chapter 2 verse 12, But these are natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption and shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime sports are they and blemishes sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin, beguiling on stable souls, and hatch they have exercised with covetous practices, cause their children which are forsaking the right way, and are gone astray following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosom, who loved the wages of a righteousness and was rebuked for his iniquity, dumb as speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. These beasts are like wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved. How long? I said, How long? out loud i said out long forever jude i'm reading it's not only one chapter jude one chapter verse 10 but these speak evil of those things they know not but what they know naturally as brute beasts it's talking about sinners talking about scoffers talking about scorners it says they're like brute beasts. In those things, they corrupt themselves unto them. For they are gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward and perished in the gain sin of Corinth. These are spots in your fields of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, Clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruits wither is, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, 
wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness how long forever look at job chapter 39 sinners are like beasts sinners are like peacocks peacocks proud pompous haughty unintelligent not wise look at chapter 39 of job and we're reading from verse 13 job 39 reading from verse 13 in verse 13 givest thou the, the goodly wings unto the peacocks of the wings and feathers unto the ostrich which leaveth her eggs in the earth and warmest them in the dust and forgetteth that the fruit the fruit may crush them and that the wild bees may break them she's had it against her young ones as though they were not hers her labor is in vain without fear because god has deprived her of wisdom neither as the as she imparted to her understanding it talks in verse 13 about the peacocks if you've seen the picture of the peacocks before this pride and is proud of nothing is proud of unintelligence is proud of not having knowledge and then the ostrich the ostrich is the one that will put the head in the sand and uh, act as if there's no problem there's no danger and even though the worm may be raging around her yet she puts her head in the sand and is having a jolly good time because the intelligence to understand is not there i pray we will not be like the peacock you will not be like the ostrich proud pompous haughty unintelligent we're looking at isaiah chapter 2 verse 12 isaiah chapter 2 verse 12 for the day of the lord of hosts shall be upon everyone that is proud and lofty like the peacocks like the ostrich we're read about and upon everyone that lifted up that is lifted up and he shall be brought low the unbelievers the sinners are like asses and as and as look at jeremiah chapter 22 jeremiah chapter 22 i'm reading from verse 19 jeremiah chapter 22 verse 19 it shall be buried with the burial of an ass drawn and cast forth beyond the gates of jerusalem who is this look at verse 18 therefore thus says the lord concerning jehoiakim the son of josiah king of judah they shall not lament for him saying ah my brother or ah my sister ah sister they shall not lament for him saying ah lord that because he was a king ah his glory he shall be buried with the burial of an ass drawn and cast forth beyond the gates of jerusalem why because he didn't apply the word of god the knowledge of god and acted and behaved like an ass look at verse 21 i speak unto thee in the prosperity but thou said i will not hear that's why the lord is referring to him as an ass you said i will not hear this has been thy manner from thy youth that thou obeyest not my voice the sinner is referred to as a horse 
in Jeremiah chapter 5, Jeremiah chapter 5, or reading from verse 8, Jeremiah chapter 5, reading from verse 8, they were as fed horses, they, they were men, they, the Israelites, they, the sinful people, they were as fed horses in the morning, everyone nest after his neighbor's wife. They were so passionate about their pursuit of women, or if they are men, if they are women of men, that they pursued those men, they pursued those women, and the other people's wives, other people's husbands. Shall I not visit for these things, says the Lord, and shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? I was talking about the children of Israel. I refer to them as horses. Look at chapter 8. In chapter 8, verse 6. Chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 6. It says in Jeremiah 8, verse 6, I hearkened and heard, but he speak not aright. No man repented him of his wickedness, saying, What have I done? Everyone turned to his own cause as the horse rushes into the battle. Verse 8, how do you say? We are wise, and the law of the Lord is with us. How do you do things that are sinful, and you don't ever repent and turn around, and then you say, the word of the Lord is with us. We are coming to Psalm 10. In Psalm 10, I'm reading from verse 9. Psalm 10, we're reading from verse 9. It says in verse 9, he lies in wait secretly as a lion in his den. Those are the people that are looking at how they will catch a righteous man, a righteous woman. They behave like lions. They act still and quiet as if the innocent people. He lies in wait secretly as a lion in his den. He lies in wait to catch the poor. He does catch the poor when he draws him into his net. Verse 10, he crouches and humbles himself that the poor may fall by his strong ones. He has said in his heart, God has forgotten. He hides his face. He will never see it. There are people that, although they are religious, although they mention the name of God, although you will think that they are righteous people, church people, yet they forget God. In all their actions, they do whatever they want to do. As if there were no God. What's going to happen to such lions? We're looking at Isaiah chapter 35. Isaiah chapter 35. I read from verse 8. It says, And an highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over it. The dog shall not pass over it. The goat shall not pass over it. The swine shall not pass over it. The way of holiness. And the serpent shall not pass over it. The scorpions shall not pass over it. The wolves shall not pass over it. The foxes and the bees shall not pass over it. The peacocks and the ostrich shall not pass over it. The asses and the horses shall not pass over it. The lions too shall not pass over it. The unclean shall not pass over it. But it shall be for those the wayfaring men, the fools shall not hear the hearing, shall not hear the hearing. No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast 
shall go up thereon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed of the Lord shall walk there. Any amen there? And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sign shall flee away. Somebody shout, Amen. Amen. Point number two now. The punishment of unrelenting, stubborn sinners. We're coming back to Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. We're reading the words of Jesus. It tells us in Matthew chapter 25, verse 33. And he said, the sheep on his right hand, and but the goats on the left, the goats on the left, look at verse 41, then shall he say also unto them, the goats on the left hand, depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels, verse 46, and these shall go into everlasting punishment. The goats, the stubborn sinners, to everlasting punishment. We're looking at Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. And I'm reading from verse 23. Matthew 7, verse 23. It says... And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that walk in equity. Who are the them? Is going to say, Depart from me. Verse 21. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, these are the people that the name of the Lord is not far from their mouth. Lord, Lord. Not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father, which is in heaven, for many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works. There are people, religious people, Pentecostal people, probably even some deeper life uh, misled people. They equate prophecy, and they equate speaking in tongues, and they equate working miracles as a substitute of salvation. And they say, we we'll take this, even though the evidence of salvation is no more there, evidence of conversion is no more there, evidence of righteousness is no more there, but in his name they prophesy. In his name, they cast out devils. In his name, they do many good works. Like feeding the hungry. Like giving drink to the thirsty. Like clothing the naked. Like some other works that are even supernatural. And then in verse 23, Then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Do you know somebody can do all those things and not retain salvation? Have pride. Have hatred in the heart, have disobedience, and go the wrong way. And all he's doing now, excited about is I'm doing good, I'm feeding the poor, I'm clothing the naked, I'm giving drink to the thirsty, I'm visiting the hospitals, I'm visiting the prisons, and yet the real salvation and the real strength. And the real victory of the believer living above sin, the secret sinning, the Lord said, I'll profess unto them, I never knew you. I pray that will not happen to any of us. Okay, that will not happen to me. You know, the people who can, you know, concentrate on preaching, they're giving out and giving out. 
and they are not they are giving out the spiritual food and they are not taking the spiritual food themselves and you'll be wondering how is the life of the preacher so different from the utterances and proclamation of his mouth they're like those conductors at the car park that put all the people into the buses to go to a good destination and they themselves are going nowhere praise god i'm going somewhere i said praise god i'm going somewhere you will not be a preacher that does not possess the real grace of god and the real righteousness in your life in jesus name tell me good good amen we're looking at matthew chapter 13 verse 40 matthew chapter 13 verse 14 as therefore the tears are gathered and burnt in the fire so shall it be in the age of this world the son of man shall send forth his angels and shall gather out of his kingdom gather out of his kingdom the people who are seated in his kingdom the people who remain in his kingdom the people who say you cannot move me you cannot change me you cannot shake me i remain in the kingdom the time is coming that the son of man himself the son of god will come and send forth his angels and he shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them that do iniquity them that do iniquity and shall cast them into the furnace of fire there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth look at verse 49 so shall it be at the end of the world the angel shall come forth and save us separate the wicked from among the just the goats from among the sheep and shall cast them into the furnace of fire there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth verse 51 jesus says unto them have ye understood all these things answer have you understood all these things answer now they said unto him everybody say it yes lord you understand it takes more than leading us fellowship to get to heaven it takes more than pastoring a local church to get to heaven it takes more than being a worker to get to heaven there must be the evidence of righteousness coming out of a changed heart a sanctified heart a pure heart i pray that evidence will be in every one of our lives look at matthew chapter 23 matthew chapter 23 i'm reading from verse 33 matthew chapter 23 verse 33 ye serpents ye generation of vipers how can ye escape the damnation of hell talking about all sinners there ye goats how can ye escape the damnation of hell ye dogs returning to your vomit and doing all those uh, messy defiling things even in the public without any shame how can you escape the damnation of hell ye swine getting yourself back into dirt how can you escape the damnation of hell ye scorpions poisoning the lives of other people causing pain in the lives of other people ye scorpions how can ye escape the damnation of hell ye wolves deceptive you come with sheep's clothing but inwardly you are ravening wolf how can you escape the damnation of hell ye foxes deceptive and then you hide to hurt other people and even derail them from the way of salvation how can you escape the damnation 
of hell, ye beasts, animals, brutes, wicked, cruel, devouring. How can you escape the damnation of hell, you peacocks, ostriches? How can you escape the damnation of hell? And ye asses, dumb asses, how can you escape the damnation of hell? And you galloping and rushing horses, rushing after men, rushing after women, to defile them and to defile yourself. How can you escape the damnation of hell? And you lions, bulge, aggressive, destructive, tearing souls in pieces. How can you escape the damnation of hell? You serpents, you generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? We're looking at Luke chapter 23. Luke chapter 23. In Luke chapter 23, I'm reading from verse 27. Luke 23, verse 27. And there followed him a great multitude. Luke chapter 23, verse 27. Luke chapter 13, rather. Luke chapter 13. Please turn back with me to Luke chapter 13. Luke chapter 13, verse 27. In verse 27, But it shall say, I tell you, I know you not whence ye are. It's one thing for church people to know you. It's one thing for Peter, James, or John to know you. But now for Christ to know you. That's the real thing. I know you not whence ye are. Depart from me, all ye that all ye workers of iniquity. There shall be weeping and gnashing of tears. When ye shall see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God, and you yourselves thrust out, you yourselves thrust out. I pray that will not happen to us. Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews chapter 6. We're reading from verse 8. Hebrews chapter 6. Reading from verse 8. Hebrews 6, 8. But that which bears thorns and briars is rejected and is nice unto cursing, whose end is to be burnt. That will not be my end. I say that will not be your end. Amen. Revelation, Revelation chapter 22. We're reading from verse 15. Revelation chapter 22, verse 15. For without are dogs. For without are the stubborn goats. For without are the dirty swine. For, the, for without outside the kingdom are the dangerous scorpions. For outside the kingdom, without at the wicked sneaking serpents. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever, tell me, I can't hear my people, and whosoever say it aloud, there's no reason for a child of God to lie. There's no gain for a child of God to act out a lie, to pretend, to deceive, especially that we know we're members one of another. 
and we should love each other. And you never lie to a person you really love. And so it says, whosoever loveth and maketh a lie, that's the hottest part of hell for them. Thank God I will not go there. Revelation chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 10. Revelation chapter 14. We're reading from verse 10. The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name in chapter 19 chapter 19 verse 20 in revelation chapter 19 verse 20 it says and the beast was taken and was him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image, these both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone. You will not be there. Chapter 20, verse 10. Chapter 20, verse 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night, for how long? Forever and ever. Verse 15, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life. And remember, it takes me born again. It takes me a child of God. It takes conversion, sustained conversion, constant conversion, permanent conversion, a new life, a transparent life, steadfast, righteous life to get to heaven and for your name to be in the book of life. And it says, whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Chapter 21, I'm reading from verse 8. Chapter 21, reading from verse 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and the old mongers those are the fornicators and the, and, the idolat and the adulterers. And sorcerers, you know them, sorcerers, sorcerers, and idolaters. And all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. This, which is the second death. We're coming back to Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25, and we're reading from verse 41. Matthew chapter 25, verse 41. Then shall you say also unto them, On the left hand, on the left hand, the ghosts and the dogs and the swine and the serpents and the scorpions and all those bees who are beastly nature, depart from me. Ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Point number three now, the promise for on retiring, on tiring, submissive saints. Submissive saints. In Matthew chapter 25, reading from verse 33. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, 
but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the earth. The kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the earth. The Lord knows those who are his, and thank God he knows me. I said the Lord knows who are his, and thank God he knows me. Does he know you? But you can't talk that he knows you, you are not confident. Thank God he knows me. Daniel chapter 12, reading from verse 2. Daniel chapter 12 I'm reading from verse 2 and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake some to everlasting life the sheep the righteous the saved the saints the purified the just the people that have practical righteousness, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Verse 3, And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. You lost your amen there. Yeah. First Corinthians chapter 2. In First Corinthians chapter 2, reading from verse 9. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. But as it is reaching, I has not seen, no ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. You'll be there. First Peter chapter 1 verse 3. First Peter chapter 1 verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again into a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fades not away reserved in heaven for, for you who are kept by the power of God kept in righteousness, who are kept by the power of God, kept in holiness, who are kept by the power of God, kept in purity of heart and purity of life, who are kept by the power of God, kept in sound doctrine, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time tells us in 1st Thessalonians chapter 4. 1st Thessalonians chapter 4. We're reading from verse 15. 1st Thessalonians chapter 4. Reading from verse 15. For this was say unto you by the word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not pre prevent, proceed, hinder, come before them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a, with a shout and with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise forth. Then we which are alive are you there? We which are alive, will you be there? Will you be, be part of this? And remain shall be cut off together 
were them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Look at this. And so shall we ever, and so shall we ever, and so shall we forever be with the Lord. I pray that that promise will not miss you. Hebrews chapter 13. We're reading from verse 12. Hebrews chapter 13. Reading from verse 12. Wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. Let us go forth therefore unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. For here have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come. There's a city, the heavenly city, and that's the city we're going to. And if you're an overcomer, thank God you'll be an overcomer. When Christ comes, you'll be there in Jesus' name. Revelation chapter 21 verse 7. Revelation chapter 21, I'm reading from verse 7. In verse 7, he that overcometh shall inherit all things. Any overcomer in the house tonight, God will continue to give you the grace to overcome. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. The Lord is coming again, and the coming is so near, and is coming for those who will be overcomers. In Revelation chapter 22, Revelation chapter 22, reading from verse 12, and behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. In Second Timothy, chapter 4, Second Timothy, chapter 4, we're reading from verse 6. Second Timothy, chapter 4, verse 6, for I am now ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. Paul the Apostle knew that was ready. And we ought to know that we're ready. And we ought to live each day as if the Lord might come on that day, every day. And live every day ready for the coming of the Lord. Or if the Lord tarries, ready for being called home. He says, for I am now ready. Look at verse 7. I have fought a good Fight. Fighting for the truth, fighting for the faith, earnestly contending for the faith. Once delivered unto the saints, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my cause. I've kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. He will give it to you too. And not to me only but unto all them also that love is appearing. Verse 18, And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. Say it, The Lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom. To him the glory forever and ever. The Lord will keep you. The Lord will protect you. And the Lord will not allow you, after all this, uh, you know, experience of salvation, after all this laboring for the Lord, after all this faithfulness of these years, after obedience to the Word of God, after consecrating your life, your time, some of us fully, without even doing any other thing, after consecrating everything you've had to the Lord, the Lord will preserve you. And the Lord will keep you you will not perish. I said you will not perish. 
the favor of the Lord and the strength of the Lord and the power of the Lord will abide with you in Jesus' name. Jude verse 24. Jude verse 24. Now unto him that is able. God is able. Able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with ever with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and ever Amen when that day comes the Lord will separate his sheep from the goats he will search the sheep on the right hand and the goats on the left hand and thank God I'm praying for you and thank God Christ is praying for you and thank God even yourself you are watching and praying you will land on the right hand side then shall the king say unto you on the right hand side come ye blessed of my father inherit the kingdom prepared for who where is he? Where is she prepared for you? You'll be there. It's been prepared for you from the foundation of the world. It may be soon, very soon, you'll hear the voice of the king. Yes, beloved son, beloved daughter, you're on his right hand. Come on into heaven. Forever will be your joy in Jesus' name. Remain on that right hand side, righteousness. And then reach out to the people who are still on the left hand side and bring many souls into the kingdom. Your joy will be everlasting. Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer. The Lord has spoken to us. He loves us. He's warned us ahead of time. There are goats. Don't be a goat. There are dogs. Don't be a dog. The swine, pig, dirty, wallowing in the mire. Don't be like that. There are serpents. They come from behind and bite. They're sneaking into the congregation, biting people, biting leaders and biting members. Don't be a serpent. There are scorpions. And the poison on their tongue is unbearable. Don't be a scorpion. There are wolves. They scatter the fold. They act in such a way. They don't care who backslides. Through their action, don't be a wolf. There are foxes, sly, deceptive, hidden, secret. Take us the little foxes. The foxes that spoil the vine. For vines are tender, have tender grapes. They are beasts. They speak evil of dignitaries. Speak evil of leaders speak evil of those who are trying to lead them into the kingdom of God. There are peacocks and ostriches, proud, haughty, uncontrollable. There are asses, dumb asses. Don't be like that. There are horses, they rush towards evil. A rush as in battle warring. Don't be like that. The lions, tearing in pieces, wicked, violent, murderous. Don't be like that. Or you'll find yourself. On the left hand side, forever and ever, will the devil come on to the right hand side? 
Repent. Renew your consecration to the Lord. And say, Lord, here am I. Make me to be permanently on your right hand side. 